Hello, once again, welcome on this happy Saturday. Uh, hi guys, I'm Tony Leonard, sitting in for uh, ZBrush Live. Uh, today, I'm going to be going through a couple of things, but uh, I'm mostly going to wing it. Uh, wing it in comparison to, to our conversation from last time around. Uh, I believe I was building some probably building assets, but uh, I think I'm going to try to incorporate ZBrush and a couple of other things, and maybe we'll go around and show a few things. Give me just one second, I'm going to try to figure out a few settings here, get a few things opened up, and we'll get started. And as always, um, I'm just going to say, uh, everyone who is viewing, if you can, uh, try to give me a shout out in, uh, in the chat. And if uh, I miss questions, I'll try to circle back and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, sometimes when I'm working, I, I have to split my attentions between four different monitors. So bear with me and I'll try to answer some questions. Cool, cool. All right, so let's set this up to get started. Um, there's things that I, you know, usually I save this for like the last part of uh, things that I'm doing. Actually, oh, let me get back to OBS here so I can. There we go. Sorry, I need to do this. There we are. And uh, that. And there we are in our ZBrush environment. Great. Okay. Sorry, just going through the various chat devices to say hello. Oh, cool. Everything's working great. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So let's get started. Um... Last time around, I think I might have accidentally killed the file that I was working on last time. Uh, but there was a couple of different workflows that I've been going through, and most of them have to do with using ZBrush, and then hopping from ZBrush over to applications like Blender, uh, soon to be Blender 2.8. Um, I think I've made a few rounds in uh, Octane, just talking just a few basics. Uh, today I might actually use a different render, because I've been playing with some ideas um, uh, in Marmoset, actually, as a render, um, and kind of showing more of like a, a game style uh, render um, based off of you know geometry that I'm pulling out of ZBrush and also out of Blender mixed together. Uh, I hop over to Blender sometimes to do like uh, second and tertiary details or even some poly editing, uh, but it it's sort of besides doing any type of sculpting. So I do most of my concept sculpting. Uh, and build in ZBrush, and then I move a lot of assets out of, Z of ZBrush into Blender, and then back into ZBrush again. So, uh, for the cause of staying on mandate, uh, I always like to show you guys things that kind of integrate a few different paths. Uh, you know, using ZBrush as a main tool, and then using uh, additional software. 
uh, together to, to build one cohesive look. So I'm just going to kind of go through some things and kind of like freestyle it for today. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do something environment-wise or character-wise today, but there's a couple of neat little features that I might show um, having to do with uh, 2.8 here soon. I'm not exactly sure if I want to jump into it today or if I'll have time inside of two hours, but uh, let's get to it. And, uh, if you guys have any questions while I'm, I'm working, just please do ask, and uh, I'll try to either speak on it or give an example of it and uh, explain what I mean uh, to answer your questions. Alright, so usually I'm just going to go up here to the tools. I'm going to grab Polymesh 3D. As, um, I think uh, Mike Pavlovich mentioned this, but uh, every time I drop one of these, uh, the cool thing about dropping a star is you can immediately get started because you don't have to make Polymesh 3D because it's already a Polymesh 3D. So I'm going to hit T on the keyboard. And uh, let's see, just for document's sake, I'm going to bump it up just a little. Turn Pro off. Do 1920 by 1080 the workspace and resize it. And when I do that, I'm going to have to say Command N and do New. Drag another star. T to start editing again. I'm going to come down on the subtool. I'm going to do something like, uh, I'm going to initialize this, of course. If I sound a little groggy today, unfortunately, I've been working my way through two rounds of kid colds, children colds, uh, this week. And so I've been pretty hit pretty hard, so my, my throat's been in and out for the week <laughs> with, a, you know, a little bit of coughing and whatnot. So you'll have to excuse me if I sound, so sound a little gravelly here and there. <coughs> <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to convert this uh, by initializing it to a Q-cube uh, as a start. And if I look at the polygroups, I have something like this. Uh, and the reason why I do that is uh, I initialize it to jump right in so that I can start using something like the Z-Modeler tool. So I'm just going to try to like build some basic shapes, uh, sort of like a proxy mesh from this. Maybe grab a couple of faces, hit symmetry, alt, and deal with the single poly pick, yeah, the single uh, poly selection. Uh, and of course, with these modes, you can hit the space bar while on the face, and affect all of the uh, modifiers that you have on the face here. So, single poly Q mesh mode, uh, maybe tenth or quarter step, and I'm just gonna try to like you know pull out some shapes. Maybe take uh, the edge and slide it. Or actually, you know what? I think I'm going to leave that and just do like insert. Alright. I'm going to grab these guys and just sort of build like a, a sketch here. Alright. And I'm going to insert another, another. Pull this out. And I'm going to do something like this. And so whatever I'm doing, I'm affecting on the X on both sides. Um, right now I'm just doing a few extrudes and pulling out uh, geometry. Uh, and then what I'm doing is all, as well is inserting an edge loop. Uh, making a divide so that I can work with just like uh, the sectionalized piece of geometry here. So if I needed to match this up, but I'm not sure of the angle, I can further manipulate this by holding control on the keyboard, selecting on both sides just these ends, and if I hold control and tap on the canvas, it'll invert the mask. And then I can just use my world space gizmo, uh, alt click on maybe one of the, the uh, verts on the corner. You can then, you know, uh, get your move tool centered uh, per the axis right there on the corner. And then I'll just pull these down. Get it sort of what? The same length, right? So I guess maybe I'll build something that maybe I'll have in mind as a. As a prop, 
I mean, this kind of shape is looking a little croppy. No pun intended. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, when you work with uh, Z modeling, some of the things that I love and enjoy about it is being able to pull out um, different pieces of geometry, really low poly simple stuff, uh, and then make that complex. So. Oh, did I have a couple of questions here? Let me see here. Hey, what do you recommend for getting into the industry? Uh, for the most part, what I would say to that, at the top of that list would be having a strong portfolio, right? Uh, and then, of course, you know, perhaps building a rapport with people in industry that you know you can pull in as 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 allies, really. Um, sometimes that could be a community of artists that you work with, you know, doing personal projects. Uh, that could be, you know, lead into doing freelance with someone and then further getting your name out, trying different industry events and being able to show a, a strong portfolio, GDC, CTN, uh, San Diego Comic Con, um, you know, uh, somewhere along those lines of, of trying to make connections and or having a strong portfolio, I think, uh, with a little persistence will get you there. Um, and always just staying on top of whatever job or freelance that you get you know, and building a, a reputation for yourself, I suppose. Um, straight out of university, if, if you're going to some place that is maybe even like a, an entertainment uh, ended school, like say Noman or uh, Brainstorm or any of the other art schools, um, CalArts, uh, Art Center, I think probably with a lot of those credentials, you know, uh, you know, having a, a portfolio at the end, you could, you could probably um, be well versed with the, the lay of the land and be able to uh, get yourself out there. And at least, you know, using social media as well, you know, exposing yourself. Um, sometimes the, the weirdest things happen uh, word of mouth, um, to, to be really specific. Hi, how are you? Uh, I figured I would probably build something of a prop, uh, maybe like an environment prop. Uh, I, know, I think I lost a file or two from last time around, so I, I figured I would rebuild some files. Um, somewhere, there was a couple of bad saves that I had. It wiped out a couple of files and then I, from last time I was uh, streaming. Um, due to the fact that I've been kind of really busy working on some production stuff for the last like, six months, uh, here recently I had to cut my streams down to like maybe once a month on uh, ZBrush Live. But, I think I might be in some clearing here soon, so we'll see. But uh, since the last time around, I lost a few things, so I'm just going to start something over today. But um, there's a couple of different things that I was going to show. Uh, one was, again, doing things inside of ZBrush, and then pulling those things into a few other apps. Uh, one of which might be Blender. Uh, and of course, you know, I'll show you guys something that I've been working on just idle in my idle time. Uh, and I'll explain where this comes from. So this is an experiment that I've been doing and a lot of this was done in ZBrush. Uh, the character down here at the bottom in the EVA suit. Uh, this was part of some throwaway stuff that I had from some work that I was doing. Uh, kit bashed a few other pieces, uh, used panel looping and uh, concept meshing just to shell out the helmet, uh, chest plate, and used uh, a Q mesh and also Blender's uh, Blender's uh, features. Uh, a friend of mine makes a software called HardOps, which is a, a serious Boolean tool, uh, and I've been using it along with his Kit Ops, HardOps, and Kit Ops together to do things like uh, hardcore Booleans and inserts that go into some of the geometry back here. This is actually a little bit more smooth than I would want it, and I, I'm actually still working on the figure, but I wanted to throw it in to sort of uh, compose a scene and show you guys something like this. So I think a couple of times around I probably modeled this, actually this walker tank, uh, inside of uh, uh, ZBrush Live here. Yeah, I do remember showing it. but. Uh, this has since been taken in, taken into Blender, where uh, piece by piece, certain areas have been giving uh, materials. So, like, uh, not PBR materials per se, but like uh, per the geometry or a piece of geometry, a lot of them have uh, material IDs attached to them. So, like, if I click on one piece of something, 
in that piece if I expand it you'll see that there's an actual material that corresponds with my material list here on the right uh, and so when I need to change each and every element uh, I would just go to the material and, and do a little tweaking even if I didn't have maps but I can use this for you know just uh, you know giving it color giving it specularity uh, a lot of times I'll switch over to the metalness and pull in some of the values and make things a little bit more dull and matte finish. Uh, but of course, you know, in final I would I would probably need to UV, retopo UV, and uh, probably put some of this together as an actual UV model, like a, more of a production model to get the, the best results. In fact, you can notice probably in Marmoset the environment moves just it's smooth enough, but it's it sometimes sticks a little bit because you know we have uh, some high poly uh, wares inside of this model here, and the same would be for the figure. But uh, also in this, uh, not just using ZBrush, um, using Blender as well, and for the flooring, uh, the tiling, a lot of the floor was done in Quixel Mixer, uh, which is really awesome if you subscribe to my uh, Mega Scans. Um, I'm using some textures that I, I basically made from custom. Uh, excuse me, one second, please. Sorry about that. But as I was explaining, uh, Quixel Mixer is basically sort of like a a texturing software, uh, and they have a, a serious collection of PBR scans that you can use, uh, and so that's sort of how I came up with the flooring. And because I'm using a metalless workflow, I'll show you guys a few things. Uh, I have basically what is set up as a displacement map, a normal map, a roughness map, and an albedo map. Uh, and so you know I can just put like assets that I have on a plane. Uh, maybe in, in say a modeling case you might have like a pedestal or something that you need and you want like a unique floor pattern uh, You could definitely use something like mixer, which is really cool uh, And all of these things are scalable of course like I can turn the displacement up uh, This is displacement with a little bit of tessellation uh, As you can see here with the PN triangles So when I when I actually look at the mesh, it's actually triangulated and sort of uh, uh, like a, a web of, of t tessellation uh, but it's what gives all of this a lot of the high fidelity that it, that it has. So still need to work on some of the colors of this because uh, some of the light gives it a little bit of weird specularity. But uh, combined with maybe, uh, let's see here, fog. If I turn the fog on, you guys kind of might see where I'm kind of going with some of this, creating sort of a just airy atmosphere. And of course, Marmoset is based off of a, a game engine, I believe, so it's probably close to um, something that you would get in Unreal or something like that. Um, or you could use Unreal or Unity with the same products, but uh, for this kit test case, I just wanted to throw something together really quick and, and have a go at it. Uh, but this would be really just basically enough for me to start taking as a, like a production style, like a cinematic. And I could use this as a basis for, uh, for a paint over or something like that, adding other elements. Yeah, so eventually this will be sort of like a Mars scene you know, after a little bit of work more on the textures and whatnot. Uh, I-74 ZBrush? I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Uh, <laughs> Maybe something, I'm sorry, EE -E Smash, uh, maybe something got mixed up uh, when you came in. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just doing some a few different things between ZBrush and a few other apps uh, to show how to use them for uh, the purpose of illustration. So like if you're setting up things for uh, like a cinematic or something like that, uh, it gets fun for that. So anyway, alright, let's get back to it. So I'm going to just uh, go on the face. over a little bit. Turn on the 
floor, so you know we're even. It's like one of those is not. cold season is some serious stuff man I hope you guys stay well out there all right so maybe just like a front facade and... yep okay so I'm gonna take this really quick and I'm gonna modify this a little bit so we have like more of a interesting shape. I mean, as a basic shape, something like this would be cool enough, but I wanna try something really quick. So I'm gonna take this piece and actually export it out really quick. Excuse me, my children are running about. <laughs> All right, bud. All right, so I'm going to take that now and open it up over here. I want to show you guys a few things. Uh, we'll go ahead and import wavefront. Uh, we're going to do here. And did I not save? Should have saved. Ah, yeah. There it goes. There we go. And I'm gonna take uh, this box and just delete it because I don't need it. It's just the opening object from the scene. Uh, and then I'm gonna select this, which actually it looks like it exported it in pieces. So let me just redo that really quick. Every once in a while in ZBrush, I, I know it's probably by t default you need to check this, but uh, sometimes uh, on the export, you need to maybe change these settings. Uh, not group, um, and let it merge UV chords, and it doesn't need any texture, and just quad, right? Uh, and then we can try to export this because uh as you notice over here in blender if you don't set it that way every once in a while if you're new to zbrush maybe perhaps uh if you don't if you have it set by default every once in a while when you kick out obj's it'll be parted uh, because probably it takes like different poly groups and whatnot and it parts it out and makes it actual group so if you don't want this and you want your geometry actually to be one manifold piece uh go ahead and delete this and go back to ZBrush and re-export it. Oops. There we go. Place. All right. So I'm gonna go back over here and import it. There we go. So now we actually have one solid chunk we can work with. We can even, you know, select this, hit tab, probably, and start editing some stuff. Actually, Alt G this. Uh, first, I'm going to do location, rotation, and scale in Blender. Uh, and that just readjusts everything, you know, as far as like scale and whatnot. Uh, 
I'll bring this up. Oops, that's weird. Alright, so I have a piece here, and what I wanted to do is just try to use box cutter really quick to maybe make like a few cuts, and I can kind of show you guys um, some features from it that I like to use a lot. Uh, so while I have this, um, I know this is a completely different environment, but Blender, of course, you know, is free, and box cutter. Uh, is a plugin made by Master Z on 1001 uh, and it's a fairly inexpensive add-on for Blender but the things that you can do with it are really complex boolean operations um, and there's a few other things for hard surface that are really cool with it and so I always like to turn people on to it because it's a really really nice you know accessible solution also to use in conjunction with ZBrush um, and get some really rad results so for this I'm just gonna go into my pie menu by hitting D I'm going to use a, just a simple cutter box, uh, and I'm going to actually use it destructively. So there's destructive and non-destructive, and basically destructive just straight away takes a box, holding control, and just, oops, actually, hold on a second, I think there's something weird with this geo. Delete that, and import this, or front that. File. I'm not sure why, but it didn't want to. There we go. So now I can take this, uh, and I'll hit Alt W to turn to activate box cutter. D for that pie menu again. Still undestructive. And I hit box, and I'm gonna work outside of symmetry. So I'm gonna do everything sort of asymmetrical, but that's okay. We can fix that later. So I can make cuts like this. So if I wanted to make you know a, a few more interesting cuts into the geo, I can make it a little bit more complex. And then simply hit Alt X and skip those onto the other side, right? Uh, I can also do some things like, uh, and of course, uh, this will probably be like a non-subdivided object. Uh, being that, let me grab it by the edge there. Uh, being that a lot of these objects will have ingons in them, uh, and if I don't solve the geo here and now, uh, which I could do editing the the complexity here uh, while I have the chance, uh, but if I didn't want to bother with it and I just wanted to get it back into ZBrush, I could probably uh, upon an export save it, uh, and when I save it out as an export just click on uh, triangulate faces uh, when you can still keep polygroups which is really awesome uh, so you can just sort of define some polygrouped areas for yourself so I'm going to take this do a quick bevel here uh, maybe also take this here this here there we go grab these faces there we go do a nice little bevel along there along the face Come out of edit mode, do a few more box cuts. Uh, oops. There we go. There we go. And I'll continue that on the other side by Alt X using symmetry. Again, I must apologize for my voice and my sinuses. They're really, really bad. You know, he's answering a good. He's really good at answering questions. <laughs> uh, please do. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, uh, fire away. I'll, I'll try to catch back up. I'm pretty sure today, being the 17th, should have been me uh, uh, at this hour from 4 to 6 p.m. So. Uh, I'll be still around for another hour, it looks like hour and a half here, we've been only 30 minutes in, but uh, let me know if there's anything or you know you would like me to try, uh, or anything that I can explain, uh, I certainly will give it a good go. Actually, let's tab out. 
Um, so not just cutting as well. Um, I'm gonna actually show you guys a few things. So I, I'm just basically kind of using like bevels to make large cuts, uh, sort of like second form cuts or secondary uh, leading to, t to tertiary form cuts. So just like trying to make the mesh a little bit more complex than what it is, but I don't also have to just cut in a box. I mean, box cutter is, is very versatile. Um, in some ways, you know, I can come in here and do also slicing. So depending if you have a box, you can change the mode of the box uh, by, of course, holding, making sure your object is selected, but holding control. And then when you click and drag out, uh, with box cutter of recent, you can hit uh, tab and sort of freeze the box. Uh, and this is a nice one I like to do a lot is actually hitting X and the box will turn yellow and what this is is, is basically this mode is like a, a slice uh, so if you wanted to do some complex slicing you can slice your geometry this way and so all of this I'm keeping in mind that I'm gonna bring it back into ZBrush and, and keep editing it so I'm just gonna do one slice here and hit enter and of course, I can edit the shape. So if I wanted to pull it in, I could actually scale it uh, if I wanted to, or grab it by the actual faces. So I'll just less than this, pull this in. We have a shape within a shape here. Uh, every once in a while, when you make some of these cuts, some of these faces might have uh, like a, some some normals along the faces that look like they're shading a little weird. Uh, it's actually just uh, sort of a, a preview issue, but if you do want to sort them out in the, the viewport, uh, you can always hit control tab, uh, going over to miscellaneous, uh, hit mesh options, excuse me, uh, and let's see, probably set the smoothing angle down to something like 10% or less. Uh, every once in a while it'll fix out some weird errors with stuff like that so if you you have like something where you have an ingon with uh, maybe or like a bevel that you know or a circle cut that has uh, sort of deformed the, the shading of the surface but you know it's flat uh, you might be able to solve some stuff that way so again let me click on the main shape here hitting alt X again and kicking that over and so you notice now with uh, actually doing symmetry on the main shape there's a shape that we have now missing on the other side right so if I look at tab I'll see the part that was cut away so our edited piece that we made a slice is therefore an independent piece of geometry uh, so what I'll do is I'll just select it do the same alt X kick it over so let's see here piece of that and actually let's try this I'm gonna make a box and freeze it and I'm gonna actually move it over a little bit size it and let's say I wanted to take a little inset piece off of this so while I have this box frozen just hold rotate and let's see Oops. Rotate it just about there, maybe. That looks like a good angle. Maybe rotate it again. There we go. So right about there, and then I'll just, uh, it would make, make sort of just like a little inset piece there. And I can hit spacebar and sort of reposition it. And I have plans for this after it makes its cut, but you could just cut that out and get sort of like a triangulated, like or angled cut like this. And then I'll just tab, deselect, select my vertex, pull this up and do a little editing. 
so probably made it a little bit more of a cut than I wanted to but uh, that's okay what we're going for is just trying to create just some interesting shapes to use so I'm going to alt exit go to the other side Oh, i7, uh, you're speaking of the CPU. Actually, you know what? I've gone the other route. Uh, personally, bang for buck, I, I have for f uh, several years now purely gone AMD for CPU. Uh, I had an 8150FX previous to what I had now. And after a long time, I upgraded. Uh, I'm using a AMD Threadripper 1950X, which is really, really fast uh, comparatively for the money. Uh, what I'm building lurking is uh, I thought it would make something of a prop shape and I'm using uh, Zmodeler along with uh, Blender uh, just to make some simple shapes and then start cutting up those shapes to give it more of an interesting look uh, and then I'm going to take this back into ZBrush and continue working off of it but I thought I would sort of give it a go here uh, just to show you guys you know sort of how to extend your reach into doing some other things um, ZBrush, of course, could probably do all of this. It might take a little bit uh, of a different workflow, uh, but it's certainly capable of doing it. Uh, it has a capable Boolean system, and I can actually take something like this now and go back and show you that if you'd like. Uh, so let's just say I take these pieces here, uh, and of course, you know what? Actually, let me do this. There's uh, one other file I should open. Uh, per the preview I was giving you guys uh, on today's stream and probably at the last bit of my last stream I showed you guys an environment uh, piece that I was building uh, and I'll kind of explain how I did it again uh, as I'm sure some of might have been curious but there's a couple of different ways that you can go about using all of this uh, if you want to do like a full-on render with materials uh, that is certainly capable uh, or a possibility, um, but you can also do some really cool tune shading and things like Keyshot. Uh, if you're doing things for, like, say, a technical illustration or production design, uh, you could probably use any of those those workflows to, to build simple props to more complex props. And that's sort of the direction that I want to move in, uh, is being able to take basic things and make a very complex, simple to complex block out, uh, in a timely manner, move all of those assets into something like a render, like it, whether it be Octane, uh, Keyshot, uh, Marmoset, a few other things, and then be able to take those assets and move them on from stills into Photoshop and do paint overs of those. So, uh, sort of to the title of the, the stream's mandate, you know, being able to, to use 3D as an assist to your 2D endeavors, uh, usually that's, that's sort of the pipeline that I, I like to talk about. But please, if you have any other questions, do let me know. Does that, that sort of uh, answer your question, Lurking? So what I was going to do is um, open up another instance of Blender and open up the file that I was speaking of earlier. Uh, let's see. just need recent stuff. But recent... Yep, okay. So this was a file that I think I showed you guys uh, in Octane, and this is the actual Blender file. But basically, it's just an environment for in a room that I had to create for some work purposes. Uh, sort of a non-disclosed project that I can't really talk about, but I had to really quickly comprise uh, sort of like a room that was like to be used uh, on a ship as a lab environment. Uh, and this is only part of the puzzle. There's a, there's another file I have of this uh, with everything put together in Octane. Uh, but basically, the, the the major components are here, and that's just like the walls, the framing of the walls, uh, basically made out of simple geometry, uh, duplicated uh, enough to, to create an expanse. Uh, and then I had a floor tile which I extend extended out and angled, uh, and then using uh, Blender's uh, uh, or Blender, or rather with uh, the add-ons, uh, box cutter, and also hard ops, uh, as well as kit ops, which is a new one for that team's uh, uh, series of softwares that they, they create for Blender. Uh, 
but I did a lot of the detailing uh, because I made a lot of inserts myself that I, I've now collected into a, sort of like a library and I used a lot of those inserts along here uh, to double up and, and create like a, like a complex tiles that I can apply to the wall uh, and some are just stock kit stuff uh, that are in there. A lot of these orange shapes are, are actually binding boxes for lighting uh, with some materials. Uh, so like if I look at this uh, say in cycles this is pretty much the render that you would be getting with something like that. Uh, and this is very close to what I have in Octane, right? Except there's probably another extended piece that, that continues on. But I, just for look development I, I put a few materials uh, as material IDs on a lot of the objects that were similar uh, and so you know like maybe there's glass uh, or tempered glass here uh, Kevlar for a lot of the dark metal look uh, and then there's a few sh shapes that I have in the file that you probably saw which were outlined in orange uh, a lot of those are uh, excuse me uh, shapes that are emission pieces for light right so to make it look like it was lit from above maybe there's a square here that has like a, an emissive and it's hidden but the light is still affecting the rest of the geometry right okay so I'm gonna go back over here and take this guy so just to, just to show you where a lot of these things you know what 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 I do with them at the end uh, this is basically sort of uh, the workflow I use uh, to get some of this stuff done. So now I'm going to show one more complex piece that, uh, of the puzzle that we can do here just while I'm in Blender. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit MGOD, uh, which will allow me, while I'm using Box Cutter, to actually draw custom shapes. And so I'm going to hold, while the shape main shape is selected, I'm just going to hold Control. I'm going to drag out just like a point and click type of shape there we go and I can move this and instead of a red box which actually at this view would cut straight through the object I'm actually gonna hit a and turn it into a gray shape and if I go off the canvas with a middle mouse mouse button I can actually affect a bevel on the, the edges and I can use the scroll wheel to scroll back and get less uh, segments in a bubble, yeah? So once I have that shape, I'll hit enter. And if you look at it in perspective view, it actually drew out the shape, right? So now, what I'm gonna do is just take this and use one of the components of hard ops and the hard ops menu, which is a little separate, uh, a little bit separate to box cutter but I'll select this shape and the main shape hit Q and under boolean operations I'll cut in and if I move this object out of the way I have a nice clean cut here right so I'll, I'll save this I'll hit one to look at things straight on and let's see yep made a nice cut so let's see if I go here, rotate, flip this around, maybe bring this back, put this through here, get the opposite side of that boolean cut, yep, just make sure that it intersects properly, then I'll select the main shape again, Q, Cut in, take this, move it out. Great. So there's one, at least one pillar with our Edgon design, sort of stencil cut maybe a little bit more. Uh, and I will take this and Alt, oops, wrong shape. We'll take this, Alt X, symmetrize that. And, yep, I think that's the shape that I want. So now with that, just delete that little cutter piece and I'll go back to the ZBrush to experiment a little bit more but I've made some cuts that I want. I have to remember to grab everything or select everything 
uh, and then I haven't put any modifiers in to anything as far as like uh, bevels for the edges uh, usually within uh, hard ups and box cutter you can select everything uh, and I can do with hard ups menu I can C sharpen and then put in a B width which basically marks all the edges and puts in a bevel, bevel modifier for the edges gives it a little softer touch I could do something like that but I save usually those steps for last uh, after I've, I've built everything so let's take this and I'll just go ahead and export everything and bring it back to uh, bring it back to ZBrush so I'll save it as a wavefront uh, here in the settings for the OBJ export I want to click selection only uh, from a reference I'm actually not working for reference at all uh, I'm just making up something out of my head uh, just sort of treating treating the geometry as a uh, as a sketch basically so I'm going to triangulate faces I'm going to click on polygroups I really don't have any materials on anything, so I'm not going to mess with uh, keeping the material groups versus some of the other stuff that I've shown you guys. A lot of times those objects have material groups on them, uh, but this time I'm just going to leave it unchecked. Then I'm going to basically put this back out uh, just to show a step. I'll save that as a different iteration and export OBJ. So I'll put Blender away. And here too, I don't want to delete anything so I'll just uh, say uh, append a new poly mesh 3d star I select it and in ZBrush I'll hit import and I'll grab that second piece and import it and it came through pretty nice and clean uh, as you can see the bevel modifier was committed to the geometry so there's quite a few loops to make this sort of like a softened edge but those are all visible all renderable right so now that I have that in there, I'll take this guy and move it down to our floor. All right? So I'm going to build some more pieces to this, but just to show you very quickly, if I was to use something like this for an illustration, uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come over. Uh, say if I have to do some concept drawings of some stuff uh, but I'm going to use the 3D base for this a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just hit uh, render uh, and I'll go to not render booleans excuse me uh, external render clicking on key shot so oops I think it's shift in sorry uh, external render key shot and then I'll just go ahead and hit BPR and kick it over to Keyshot. It'll open up Keyshot 7. And naturally, once it's there, I have my Geo. Right? Everything's flat shaded. But let's. Uh, Why is it not showing my... Nope, nope, nope. Doop, 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 doop. Sorry guys, hold on one second. I'm just going to edit the material really quick. Uh... There we go. Sorry. Couldn't think of the hotcut key to bring the materials about for some reason, but it's just simply M. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a brain fart. But uh, we can change our environment. So I'll just uh, make something like this all white. Uh, and then material wise, I've saved a custom of this, but if you were to simply hit Tune Shader inside of, uh, uh, inside of Keyshot, you know, you'll have all of the choices of the tune outlines or fills. 
Uh, I have made one custom in the my and saved it to my library, so just for quick reference. But you could do something like this, basically. Uh, you could drop a tune shader on it, and I've explained the tune shader before, uh, I believe, on the show. Uh, but basically, you know, if I adjust any of the contour width, like 0.8 or something like that, um, you could change the width of the wh whatever type of line drawing you're trying to make. Uh, you can change the fill color. Uh, like, let's say if we want just all white, uh, if we want it with all no shadows, then we need to come over to our environment uh, and sort of uh, dial back. There we go. We want to dial it back to color uh, without ground shadows. And therefore, we have like a 3D object that is outlined. And you can treat this sort of as a sketch. So, like, let's say, for example, if I wanted to look at things from different views. I could hit Shift F, right, and I could just take a few different screenshots of this, right. And each time it'll save it in my renderings folder for Keyshot, which is basically a default area for whenever you save screenshots or you actually use the rendering panel inside of Keyshot, it saves it into the renderings folder of the Keyshot directory, right. So then, of course, you take it. Uh, you make a few different, you know, views or something like that. Maybe you might uh, hit shift again. You need to see not the heads up display. View. Now let's bring this for a second. All right. Sorry about that. Hold on one second. I'm just trying to pull up. Uh, top toolbar ribbon there we go uh, so I could make shots of this turn things around at different perspectives maybe if I don't want like a 35 degree camera let's say if I wanted uh, like a 75 millimeter or something like that or higher uh, something, maybe something a little less skewed uh, you could take and build your perspectives here so with more perspective maybe 45 or 35 degree uh, or you know would be the perspective degree uh, you could think of this almost like a, a camera so like if it's 35 millimeter camera you're gonna get more skewing to the plane uh, excuse me I'm sorry Sorry, you guys caught me totally just getting over a cold. As I said, I've uh, had a couple of uh, kid colds here recently. But what I can do is I can take this uh, and use this as an asset uh, within uh, Photoshop even, right? So it looks like a simple object, but I can build in and sort of sketch out a, a, any type of thumbnailing or any type of boarding using the shapes that I want, right? So I'm gonna hit it. Uh, Take another screenshot here. Maybe one from this side. And maybe, what if I want to duplicate this? So I'm going to go into ZBrush and actually, oops, create more of an expanse of this. So I'll go along the X. And I'll just control shift, oops, control shift with my world space gizmo create another duplicate of this and maybe we could get a longer expanse right in our perspective that would be cool so we could sort of uh, make a repetition of this or create another instance even right uh, and with that in mind I'm just gonna go ahead and under polygroups I'm gonna auto group these uh, and then I'm gonna uh, merge similar groups uh, which would take all these smaller strays and sort of rein them in to, to one polygroup. Uh, where's some of the groups? There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, and since I have this, I'm just gonna go ahead and render it again. Just hit VPR. Which should bring it back over here to Keyshot. Hey, 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 dude. <laughs> hey, come on, you gotta go. Excuse me for just one second.
Sorry about that, folks. My four-year-old just busted in on me midstream. Um, but as I was saying, basically you could take these shapes, put them in order, take a few screenshots, uh, and then what I would do is something like this. Because we're dealing with line art and the background is completely white, uh, I can take and open up Photoshop. Let's see, let's try that again. There we go. My apologies for the interruptions. It's a, it's a crazy weekend, getting over a cold. Got my kids home for the holidays, so it's a little chaotic. But basically, I wanted to create something of a, again, for, for those that asked, uh, something of a building prop uh, that I can use in the, in a, as, a, as a base. Oop. Looks like we have some stuff from last time when I opened Photoshop. Uh, let me just close these out really quick. I will open up from my renderings last four screenshots just for example okay so imagine you know for something like this uh, now that I've got it into Photoshop I th really like the last one that we had uh, this has got sort of like a cool perspective to it right so if I wanted to use this for illustration sake a lot of times what I would do is just take the screenshot uh, and I can res it up because these are not super high. If you look at this, actually, it's just you know maybe a little higher than uh, uh, just standard 72 DPI size, but it's got sort of I, I didn't set it for like 1080 or anything, uh, but we can change that. So I'm just basically gonna go in here and do like a canvas size on it. Uh, let's see, maybe we'll go this way. I'll do a width of. 1920, height of 1080. There we go. There we go. Uh, and I want to use this uh, line art, and I want to be able to use it in a way that I can use it over and over again. So, one of the first things that I'm going to do is uh, change the mode over to grayscale, and this should basically, in the channels, leave me with nothing but gray, right? Uh, and from that gray, what I can do is I can take this uh, and use this channel to my advantage. Uh, so I'll just load it uh, and then I'll invert it. Oops, sorry. Invert the, the selection, not the actual image. Sorry about that. Uh, and then put this fill or save this as a quick mask. So like if you've ever had a selection in Photoshop, uh, you hit Q, you, you can save things out uh, or make a sort of a copy of the quick mask channel. And so that my isolation, isolated mask of just the, the line art would, would be maintained, right? So I'm going to put this on the layers there. I have like a layer icon. We'll make a, a duplicate of it. And I'll hit Q again and come out of quick mode, uh, or quick mask mode, rather. Uh, and while I'm in gray, while I have this loaded, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run an action for this that I have set up. Uh, and I've, for the longest time I've been promising to get this uh, action set to you guys uh, I have to figure out a way to maybe post it up uh, so that you guys can try it out and use it but basically what it is is it's going to take all of the line art and separate it off automatically and set it up on a transparent layer for me it takes like a, a second and a half to do so if I just go ahead and play it and actually it filled <laughs> using the colors that I was using uh, interestingly enough, but we can fix that. Uh, let's do this. Change this to white. Uh, fill that. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and flatten that. Uh, command shift in and make a new layer. And I'll call this one line art. Oops. Right. Uh, but I still have maintained 
the excuse me I still have maintained the uh, channel so uh, in the channels I could just take this activate that come around fill this with black on a new layer and boom there I go right and of course probably if I needed to I could move it because it's it's an actual object on a I mean not an object but it's a it's a raster layer with you know everything had been masked out and filled so I can use this you know however much I, I need to right uh, so you know uh, with that in mind you could go in I'll make another sketch layer Crazy Wacom drivers, man. Certainly missing the mark sometimes when it comes to pressure sensitivity here recently. Strangely, I don't know why, but I've had more Wacom problems. Yes, yeah, sure. Maybe Jade one. You, you may certainly ask a, a question. Fire away. Ha! <laughs> Sweet. Ask a question to add, to ask a question. That's always cool. Try to fix my make sure my mapping is working here really quick. There we go. All right. Hopefully, less problems. Uh, I'm use a hard round, and I'm gonna make another layer. So, of course, naturally, you could use you know any type of painting with this, you know, uh, underneath. You know, you can even mask out everything on the outside of the lines. Mask in. Oops. Mask in. Do a fill. Oops. Not that way. Here. There we go. Right, and you can treat this as a, an illustration where you can continue out rendering any of the objects on different layers or something like that. Just create different fills uh, for the bottom of this. And if I was to keep working, naturally the complexity starts to build. Uh, ends up being pretty cool. So right now I'm just kind of doing like, you know, rough fill, brush in, uh, kind of like I would if I was to take a pen drawing and do something with it, uh, you know, with Copic markers or something like that. But don't let me stop you, if Baby Jade. If you if you wanted to ask a, a question, please by all means ask me uh, and anyone else as well. So I'm just uh, basically going along in Photoshop and just putting like you know sort of some suggestions of different shadows or something like that. Um, I can layer in some other elements if if I wanted to. Um, sometimes I can even bash a painting. Um, just by creating individual elements between, you know, ZBrush uh, 
and Blender is, is you were you were watching, um, and then I could take those and, and just sort of mix match them into a composition. Uh, that way, you know, you, you get some different shape play, uh, which is very important to me. Is, is you know, like I, I create like a lot of stuff for work, uh, uh, where I have to do a lot of different iterations of, of things, uh, sometimes very very stupid, crazily quick. Uh, you know, so like if you have like you know. <laughs> not a day, but like half a day or something to get something done. Uh, you could do use methods like this to, to really, you know, sort of dig in and at least get like a, a sort of like a comp ready type of composition. But I really don't have to sit and, and, and uh, noodle around with uh, doing things in perspective too much. Right now, I'm just sort of making some sketch lines uh, using sort of like the snapping feature of Photoshop's uh, brushes. I'm just making a sort of light, faint uh, perspective ticks, uh, sort of dialing in some uh, visual markers for myself. So, like, if I happen to come back and I, I look at the perspective and I say, oh, well, what was on grid last time I was working? I can actually just take a good look <coughs> here and, and find things very quickly. So. Basically, just thumbnailing stuff out, right? Uh, right down here. Yep, that should do it. out things or select things that I don't need. like a large area or swath of shape and just sort of start to fill it in a little bit more. And I'm just using a, just like the polygonal lasso tool in Photoshop uh, which if you ever mess with it's it's really you know simplistic but you can just uh, Oh, it's outside of shape, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, you can just take it and hold Alt. Uh, so, like, if I hit L and I have my lasso tool, if I hit Alt while I'm drawing, lift up the Alt key and then press it again, I can use sort of like a, a polygonal selection, uh, which helps with some of the contours of the shapes. So I'm just going to go ahead and just 
sort of make some landmarks in a different, a few different shades. And I'm just, I'm starting from gray shades first, just because uh, it's usually easier for my eye to just pick up gray shapes and sort of discern values first uh, before working any other way. So after working for a few minutes like this, uh, one of the cool things that I realize is that there there could be more to this, right? We have like a simple, uh, sort of semi-complex shape. I have sort of an idea, it's probably like a sidewalk or a, a human walkway, uh, maybe like a, a, a sort of short uh, alleyway or something like that. And this is maybe the base of some, you know, uh, sort of like a, a plaza or something of the sort, you know, sort of like sci-fi scenery, uh, which is kind of a, a theme that I, I usually work in a lot. Uh, but, you know, I'll just make another layer here and I'll put like a different value, gray value. So one of the things that I made sure of uh, previously, uh, go ahead and drop that layer. So this is the start of things on this side, but I also have the other side. And I don't know if it's necessarily right on the perspective, but I could always fix that because if I wanted to add something else, uh, like let's go back to ZBrush. Uh, and from where this is, I'll create uh, a duplicate of this subtool. And let's see if I can mirror and flip it. I'll flip it uh, or turn it around on its uh, Z forward. So probably, let's see, if I go uh, deformation and just go ahead and mirror it on the Z. I'm checking the X. So we have an opposite side. So I'll push this aside. All right? And maybe we might need a little bit more space. So I'll go back on the other side, push the other side out to the other side of the grid. Maybe create a little bit more space in here. Right? If I turn diameter perspective on and I hit draw, I can sort of maybe eyeball some of the same angle. So I'll turn it from its default 50 to 35, right? And I could get in here and I could start to look at, you know, okay, well, what kind of scene this is? How will this perspective work? How are my objects sit together? Maybe the distance is a little too far away. Uh, but I could also shoot this back to uh, Keyshot. And if I look at it in Keyshot again, there's the other edge of this row, right? So maybe not that bad. It might cover up some of that perspective. Uh, I'll copy the material, setting it here, uh, and I'll just paste the linked material. Uh, let's see, we had some uh, shape that maybe we want to create uh, at the end of this alleyway. So maybe I'll throw in another shape. Excuse me. Horrible, horrible congestion uh, that I'm dealing with. But my apologies. Uh, maybe I'll just do with it in Photoshop. But because I took screenshots earlier, and this is something I was going to talk about, uh, when you're working with uh, your composition, if you save the screenshot of a particular view, if you come over to the camera and you look, save really quick sorry save this as a BIP file really quick okay it's gonna save it good so back to camera I have all of the views stored here and of course I could lock these right I could lock or probably it'd be better to name it uh, POV. So I'll say POV4. And I'll lock this and I'll save it. So every time I come back uh, to the camera views between the free camera and the POV, I always have this locked, right? So I can come back and just uh, grab or pick up on it again. So I'm actually going to save this again. Uh, This is another screenshot. 
and I'll open this back up. There we go. I can separate the line art again. Uh, basically, when I make this grayscale, whatever, use this action set. So, I'm gonna hit that. And uh, I can just basically take this line art layer, copy it, and go back to our other, and paste it. So maybe view is a little bit off, I think. Let's see, which view was it? Is it that one? This one, perhaps. Let's see. Yeah, it was a little, a little bit more the other way around. So let's see. I'll find the the correct uh, view here if I can. a little farther away so there's probably a little bit more distance that's being created from being able to visibly see this side of where I had positioned it uh, last time around so that might be difficult but uh, pairing something similar I could probably turn it this way and maybe take another screenshot and I could just open up the line art and use parts that I can. Uh, this time around I'm going to change this to black. Back to grayscale again. Separate the line art again. Just use the uh, action that I made. Select all and copy. And I'm going to go back to paste here. And at least sort of maybe use some of the transform tools to sort of tweak the piece that I need. Not so much the the right side, but more so the left side is what I needed. So maybe I'll put that there. And I'll chop off the other half so we don't get confused. Oops. And I'll just start working some fills from here. Take that lighter shade. We'll sample the other, of course. There we go. And on that, I'll just start brushing in some some shades on uh, values on the shapes. some of these in the back because I didn't use them. Uh, just need to zoom in there. Get the vignette tool and actually layer 8 is where it's at. Turn that off. And so now I still have more of a, a composition. This is just like a, a basic rough of uh, say like uh, you know like if you had needed to do a cinematic or something like that.
There we go. I'll grab another layer. So I, I stack a lot of layers, but usually I, I don't I don't care how many layers I create uh, because I can either put them in a, a folder or once I start finishing with a, a certain segment, I just uh, compress all of them down. Uh, but you know, for now, I'll, you know, sky's the limit. I'll just put them in a group as necessary. Worry about it later. Just uh, try to give it some creative time, right? Sorry, I just wanted to check and make sure I'm not... Greetings from Mexico. Hola, como estamos? To everybody in Mexico, cheers. So I'm just trying to make some uh, shapes back here, like maybe sketch out like a little bit of a like a stall, like a kiosk. Maybe you know make things lived in. Maybe a few trash bins or something like that. Stuff like that's always cool. Uh, might have a few layers that are kind of underneath one another, but. silhouette of a person maybe just for scale derp come on you there we go So when I'm sketching like this, generally a lot of times I don't use like a lot of uh, custom brushes as much as one would think. Uh, <laughs> why that would be is that I just I just use like a, a standard round as sort of like a uh, as just sort of like a marker brush or something of the sort, you know. Uh,
Oops. There we go. All right. There we go. Do that. Okay. And I'll put this in a new layer, fill it. Create another fill for the ground. And I know I've covered up everything, but if I hit uh, Control Shift and one of the close brackets or open brackets, I think uh, in Photoshop you could actually kick it down a few layers. <coughs> there we go. And so I'm just basically doing some simple painting by this point, right? So, I mean, you could keep sketching, but you basically start to get the idea that uh, a lot of the parts that we originated with in ZBrush, as well as using, you know, anything else, Blender, you could probably do the same thing with, you know, if you were using Maya or uh, any other 3D package where you, you did like a little bit of poly editing, uh, and then you come back uh, to ZBrush, and you create some shapes, uh, and then those shapes, uh, after they become a little bit more complex, more advanced, uh, you bring them into Photoshop. You know, just something as simple as uh, uh, having these details, uh, you know, from 3D, like like, like a 3D base, uh, gives you a little bit more play uh, uh, in your creative range. But it, you know, like shapes, value. Uh, composition, you know, if you wanted to build like an actual entire set, you know, that is certainly possible. Basically, what I'm just doing is sort of doing like a, a little 2D comp uh, of a of a scene. Uh, you know, just trying to take a few minutes to thumbnail out something. But that thumbnail was completely generated from you know the idea of taking at first using the 3D as a basis uh, to work from. Uh, after this, I could probably use photos and actual paint layers and, and do a complete overpainting of this. Uh, you know, once I work out some values, that I could you know sort of uh, finish the composition off and, and, and sort of dedicate my time to rendering uh, something if I had, you know, uh, more approval or input back from a client or something like that, right? a little bit darker shade uh, maybe also put something right after that maybe use a gradation perhaps there we go Change this maybe to a multiply and work over that. Um, I think I'm playing. 
here actually uh, I, I think I, I'll drop a link for you guys but it's a collection of uh, what they call future <laughs> future garage mix music it's a uh, sort of like dark techno stuff that every once in a while I have I, they, my, I have like a playlist on, on YouTube of stuff that I, I play sometimes in here but uh, if you'd like here always good by music for drawing you know or modeling See, I'm gonna change my brush up a little bit. Lines actually take and uh, do a little bit of a skew here. Raise this up. Uh, do perspective. There we go. And maybe a little bit of rotate. some of the dynamic of this. Lessen some of the spacing on this brush. And I like to play, paint with a lot of like almost flat styled ovals with a pressure set. Uh, usually like in the videos you'll see it as a like transfer or something like that. You can set to uh, brush. But I changed the shape up a lot. but I'm going to paint in something here so I do this and try to do a transform again try to just maintain some of that line in the pavement Some of these might have been a little bit more incorrect. Uh, 
There we go. So now, you know, uh, at a level like this, if I'm kind of happy to where the direction is going as far as like layout wise, uh, what I'll do is I'll just take all of these from the layer that is underneath the line art, because I actually want to just keep that there. I don't want to really mess with it. Uh, all the way to the end, to the bottom fill. Uh, and I'll take it, I'll just group those. And I'll call that like, you know, the base or something like that. Uh, you know, and then I, from here I would switch and use, you know, more creative brushes and stuff like that. I have a general idea of like sort of like layout, uh, some of the visual composition, maybe some of the values I could keep uh, trying to, you know, make a little bit more stronger, a little bit more prominent, uh, do some paint over edits and stuff like that. But as, a, as far as like a thumbnail works, uh, this is kind of where I go with, with things like this. Uh, I can make another layer, I'm going to turn off this and the background. Uh, and on this blank layer, I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and just uh, merge visible, which would make like sort of like a comp layer on the top of this. Uh, and then I can turn these off, turn that back on, and this is just a, a solid layer of everything I had before. So if this layer is still around, like if I needed to go back and re maybe redraw the thumbnail, I, I have this these layers left over. And I also have the line art still left over, so if I pull that above it, still nice and strong you know so the pieces that we originally worked with are still uh, pretty strong in the composition and whatnot uh, and then of course I would just keep working underneath this so <coughs> excuse me uh, maybe I might make, a, make another layer uh, and continue working right so. uh, yeah now I am using you know strangely enough like I've been having really a lot of problems with my Wacom drivers uh, only in the case where I'm using uh, I have an Intuos Pro M uh, tablet and it's been really wonky of late on Windows 10 I don't know why uh, on my Mac no problem but when it when it concerns ZBrush for some reason uh, I don't know it's been a little iffy uh, but Photoshop still works <laughs> so like I, I don't know why but like Photoshop has some, uh, you know, great juju that ZBrush unfortunately needs to be worked on or, or something. I, I'm not entirely sure, but for some reason uh, I've been getting a lot of problems with uh, the performance in ZBrush. And so, like, sometimes, like, uh, when sculpting fine details, like, uh, I get, like, jumps in the, uh, in the brush or, you know, something of that sort like cross hatch marks and stuff like that that will happen I think those have probably been addressed and I, I try to follow the fixes for them and never seem to get it right I don't know maybe it's me but I could certainly take something like this and uh, you know, switch computers, uh, use my, I have an older Zentik 21 UX, which still works, but uh, some of the drivers of those things have been sometimes iffy. get harder shapes that uh, maybe follow a silhouette to something I'm painting in. A lot of times I use the lasso tool to just sort of uh, mark the area and just work inside of that.
also I will use another gradient uh, and I'm going to fill this one uh, from the opposite so instead of uh, being at the center mass uh, maybe I'll take this and select all and then I'll flip that or actually before I flip it I should delete that but anyway I'll make a new layer and just do it using the same uh, selection there we go and we'll turn that into a multiply just to get a nice little vignette trash that Uh, and then I'll just go ahead and for future planning I'll just take it maybe do a little bit more line sketching in black and white just on a, a top fill there uh, because I have all, uh, established some shapes but they really don't have a lot of definition so you know sometimes I'll, I'll come back and sort of reinforce the lines Turn off transfer on this brush. Just use it straight away. I know. Earlier, I think, uh, if just to reiterate on that question about uh, using a tablet versus using uh, uh, anything else, uh, like a mouse or something like that, I think uh, sometimes when I'm doing 3D stuff, uh, it's not feasible for me to use a, a tablet. So, yes, I, I do cut back and forth between using a mouse uh, and using a tablet. But... Uh, Pretty much, you know, like if I'm doing anything illustration wise, like I'm, I'm probably going to use a tablet for it. But, uh, you know, if not, uh, most of the time I'm going to try to do things with, uh, you know, just uh, basic poly editing stuff. I use a mouse for that. Uh, but illustration, I use a, a tablet. this back on. And I'm going to drop this down from 100 to 20. Oops.
use a few other brushes here, maybe to do a few things. Uh, I'll go back to that hard oval that I was using. I'm going to drop the pixel down a little bit. Pick black again and keep sketching on top of it. Bring this back up. And I'm just making some uh, random lines up top to sort of build some complexity along here, like uh, dangling cables, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, just laying out uh, a few small details and landmarks. Uh, I think uh, probably if I cut the silhouette of this foreground here, uh, I can basically sort of chop off the scenery Let's see dip the opacity down So there we go. So just, this is kind of like, uh, I can imagine this is kind of like watching paint dry on a wall, but, uh, you know, because I, I don't, I'm doing this all in real time, I'm not time lapsing or anything like that, but uh, I think basically you guys kind of get the gist of this. And, uh, so <laughs> to sort of just reiterate things, uh, what I did was, uh, to those who might have joined late, I decided that I wanted to do some type of uh, prop or environment piece, uh, and I worked uh, originally from uh, this shape here. So I'm gonna go back up in my sub tools, look at the original piece, and we can see how kind of far we came. Uh, so I just took like a basic shape, right? Uh, that basic shape, or or even sort of uh, low poly shape, was created by using uh, Z Modeler, 
uh, with on a, just a, like a simple QMesh uh, that was initiated from a PolyMesh 3D, right? Uh, once I got a sort of color shape that I was happy with, I took it over to uh, Blender, actually, and used Blender with uh, hard ops uh, and box cutter. Uh, just to cut in some shapes, do a few booleans that you know I could really quickly access, uh, take some of the pieces and save them out as one again. Uh, triangulated uh, just because even if uh, I just don't need like a, a quad mesh per se uh, for this because I'm not really worried about the topology. So it's basically a non-subdivided piece of geo, correct? Uh, and then I flipped it and I created more instances of it inside of ZBrush uh, on a subtool. Uh, and they created just like an opposite side that I could work from. So with that, I just turned the perspective on uh, and basically use these as sort of like a, a proxy mesh to use in a line drawing, right? Because if I go ahead and send this uh, via the external renderer to Keyshot, uh, from Keyshot it goes over and I just put like a two shader on it. And with that two shader in mind, that's basically sort of like the basic uh, layout or, or sort of like the, the proxy uh, you know to actually composing a, a drawing uh, probably would have been better if I took this and, and actually uh, converted this image to, to a more widescreen fit like a, I believe the the screen ratio is actually set to something that's more square or uh, not necessarily 16 over 9 but uh, you know I brought the pieces into Photoshop uh, separated the line art uh, and sort of just uh, treated it like I would almost like a comic illustration uh, except I'm doing a little bit more painting and trying to figure out some values so you know whenever you uh, have sort of like a, uh, a thumbnail process that you need to follow and you need to do a lot of these in say like a day uh, I think these are tools that can, can possibly or workflows that can possibly help uh, a lot of people um, any questions? Lastly, I think uh, we're probably wrapping up in about five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and save this one out, and maybe next time at the beginning of the show, uh, I'll have a few more of these done. But pretty much, basically, you know, this is the this is the start of a of an environment. Uh, being able to quickly communicate ideas to someone else, uh, like say perhaps if you're working with a director or you know. Uh, you know, for gaming, if you want to uh, sort of work out stages of, of uh, or levels of things, as you can imagine, this might be a, like a bazaar, you know, like a tinted bazaar or something. Uh, uh, seller of wares, you know, maybe if you need some of those back alley, you know, motherboards, you come to a place like this where old tech, you, you could still buy old tech, you know, old iron, uh, like something out of uh, all tomorrow's parties or something. <laughs> But, uh, yep, that's pretty much uh, what, I, what I wanted to run through today. So basically, we, we created a shape, and I know a lot of you were asking, well, what are you, what are you building? What are you, what's, what's going on here? Uh, so I hope with, with this last thumbnail, you sort of start, start to get the idea of uh, where I was going with this. And uh, when I get this sorted out uh, in different stages, I'll try to make some tie lasses, and maybe I, I can put them up, and we can take a look at them. And, uh, as I get it rendered, I could probably use other assets or additional assets uh, that I would generate in ZBrush, uh, like maybe uh, small props that would sit on the floor or even uh, figures for scale or uh, if I have something that's going to be in here like, like a vehicle or uh, like a vehicular prop or something like that, I could probably match it to this perspective and place it from a, a 3D into a 2D environment. Uh, and still work with that and be able to progress uh, this composition a little bit. Alrighty guys, see that's how I'm trying to recover from a cold and it's now 6 o'clock at the top of the hour. I'm going to depart, but uh, yes, I use ZBrush for concept art. Most, most definitely. Uh, it is not impossible. Uh, I mean, Every, a lot of people that I know that, that work even in film, they use ZBrush exactly like this or a sub, probably similar to uh, ZBrush being, or like any other 3D package, be, it's a tool. Uh, and along that, that workflow that you define for yourself, it's just using that tool uh, and the features within uh, to derive the result that you want, right? And, and as I always say, you need to think about the result of what you want. So do you want a 2D line drawing? Do you want uh, 
uh, a p fully painted render? Uh, do you want like a photorealistic render, or do you need something that's web or game optimized? Uh, so there's you know uh, there are many roles in that, but if you get the tool, I think whatever you guys wish to accomplish, you know, you can get it done. All right. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in. Uh, sorry about the interruptions and my, my voice is up and down with this crazy cold. But uh, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. And if I don't catch you soon enough, happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. Bye, guys. Take care.